Hi, my name is Rod Cleef, and I'm the host of the Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing Podcast. And every week I interview multifamily rock stars, and we talk about how they built incredible wealth for themselves and their families through multifamily properties. So hit the like and subscribe buttons to get notified every Monday when a new episode comes out. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Multifamily Rockstars. Now, as you guys know, this is where we interview people that are absolutely crushing it in this business. And we show you the inside scoop into, you know, how these multifamily investors are creating massive success, not just in their businesses, but also in their lives. And, you know, as always, I've got my co-host, uh, who's the director of our massive action team for my warrior mentorship program on the line here. Mark, what's up, Mark? Well, we've got a coincidence here just lately, I think with our podcast, we keep having these people on that are right at about the one year mark from joining the team here. So I don't know yeah. what it is, but uh, excited to get into another one here and hear these. Uh, cool no, success love stories. it. Love it. So love it. So we've got David Turner on today and yeah, he, he uh, joined in, I think April of last year and uh he's uh, and he's uh, got two boys, a four, uh, a four-year-old and a two-year-old and uh, he's in, he's at 166 units already and um, tech sales background. But you know what? I'll quick steal in his thunder. Wel- welcome to the show, brother. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Rod. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you having me on. For sure. Well, why don't you, um, you know, just give us some background. Give us a little bio on who you are, where you come from, and maybe why real estate, huh? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my, my wife and I, we got started in real estate a few years ago. Uh, flipping houses. Her her family. She had a background in uh, construction management, and you know we knew that we wanted to create some passive income streams, and we thought that real estate was going to be the way to go for us. And we got started do- doing a few fix and flips in Wisconsin, where we were living uh, a few years ago, and um, we really enjoyed it. But it was difficult working a, a full time W two job, having young kids. And uh, trying to juggle that with with managing projects at the same time, so we were looking for a way to to kind of create more more of a passive stream and actually scale a lot faster. And I happened to be reading a, a Bigger Pockets interview book and came across someone that started their career in multifamily and, and reached out to them and ended up finding myself in a, a Jeep or excuse me an LP position on one of their deals and. And then just decided that that was the path for us going forward. So took it from there. Nice, nice, nice. Now, um, so so you went in as a limited partner first, which is, by the way, is a fantastic way to get started, guys. And and uh, you know because you get to see behind the scenes. And you know we we spend time educating our investors and in our deals. And by the way, we've actually got a deal working right now. If you're you know if you're an accredited investor, um, text the word partner to 72345 and register on our portal because we'll be doing a webinar on it here in a couple of weeks. Um, well, depending on when this episode airs, uh, you know, might be, might be a few weeks, but, um, but the bottom line is, um, you know, it's a great way to start because, you know, you, 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 you not just see behind the scenes, but um, you know, you, you, it kind of demystifies it a little bit and, and there is some mystery to it. And especially when you're talking syndication and SEC mm-hmm. and stuff like that, it's a little bit intimidating, but um, so, so t- tell again where you came from. You had some sort of a tech background. Yeah. So I've had a, a job in it sales since college. So about okay. 12 years out of school, a couple of different organizations, but uh, mostly in the field sales position. So getting really comfortable with networking and, and able to, to position value, you know, to help, help customers or potential investors understand, you know, the, the pros and cons of a, of a deal or an opportunity. So, so, well, that begs my next question, um, you know, on, on your, in your GP role as an operator, were you, did you, were you involved in raising equity? Did you play a different role? What roles did you play um, uh, uh, as a GP? Yeah, so I definitely played a role in, in raising the capital for that deal, and mm-hmm. um, you know, being my first first GP deal, first role on the on the general partnership, really going uh, really diving straight into that the raising the capital piece was a challenge. And um, I know you talk about sometimes there's um, some horror stories or war stories. Well, definitely the the old adage of um, build the well before you before you need water that definitely came true in that case. So okay. you know, I committed to uh, raising a certain amount and um, ended up falling a little bit short, but you know it got got close to the line there. But definitely was a challenge with getting everybody across the line, and um, really learned quickly that you need to line up investors and 
and really build that funnel at the top before you, you have a deal for you to get your deal that you need to fund. Yeah. Well, you know, it, you, we, we tell you, you should be looking for deals, but you should also be raising money at the same time and building relationships. And, you know, I tell you, I'm sure I know you've heard me say it, you know, if they'll hold still long enough, they need to know what it is you're doing and start generating interest. And, and if you can find a way to add value to, you know, to people through educating them, you know, a lot of my warriors have podcasts, they have meetup groups, they have Facebook groups, they have LinkedIn profiles that they use, they you know, uh, TikTok. I mean, it's uh, they're all over the board, and they're they're building reach and adding value, and and in advance of finding the deal. So there's so there isn't a fire drill, and Absolutely. you know that's actually one of the reasons I initially started the podcast was because I hate asking for money. And I thought, you know, I'm going to do commercial real estate now. I got my ass handed to me in single family. I'm not going to continue to do that. And um, of course, it's done that and then some. But uh, yeah, and, and you mentioned the meetups, and that's something that you know. I've really strived to now get out ahead of. So actually myself and a couple of the warriors in the, the Dallas area, we've started a meetup and we've been trying to grow that presence here in DFW. So fantastic. Really Good getting for you. out there and, and building, you know, getting uh, some more credibility in the market here and, and building that investor base so that when we do have our next deal lined up, we'll know exactly what our investors are looking for and, and be able to bring them something. Well, sure. And, and what you just said is really, is really important as well uh, is, is, you know, when you host a meetup like that, or you're, you know, and you're bringing in experts and you're mm-hmm. interviewing those experts, you're perceived as an expert, even if you, you know, you're, yeah. you're a little wet behind the ears. So it's, it's just a great way to get started. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I know you didn't have any experience uh, when you came into doing this first deal, obviously no multifamily units. What, why do you feel like people actually listened to you and were willing to work with you, even though, again, you were brand new into this business? How do you think that happened? Yeah, we, we were definitely brand new in multifamily, um, although we had some very successful projects in the fix and flip space, and all of those were done through private capital. Mm-hmm. We actually funded all of our projects with the investor funds when we were flipping houses. So we we leaned on those relationships in the beginning and improved our value on how we know how to manage projects and, and um, really be a steward of other people's money. You know, that's we're, we're playing with other people's money in that case. So want to make sure that we're responsible for that. Uh, so we, we leveraged that and um, we created trust with our investors and also the, the team. You know, we leveraged the fact that we're part of a, a greater general partnership team mm-hmm. for that deal that has a lot of experience. And there's a few other warriors in that group that have right. a lot of experience as well. So it wasn't just me raising the capital and, and showing the value. It's, it was our team and it was what? our project as well. What about the warriors? Why do you think they were willing to work with you even though you were new? Yeah, that's that's a great question. So I, I had spent a lot of time, you know, through the warrior events and networking, through the Zoom calls that we have for the program, uh, building relationships with everybody in the warrior community, and I, I put in a lot of time learning underwriting and learning these systems and putting putting these other tools in place and, and building that that reputation amongst the warriors that I'd be able to bring some value to a team on a general partnership with, with your full time job and your babies and the whole and your wife and the whole deal. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I just yeah. want to stress that. I want to stress that because people think, you know, how am I going to find the time yes. to do this? Well, you did. And, 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 and I've got numerous other warriors that have that have retired even from, you know, high paying W2 jobs. Let me ask you a question, uh, David. Yeah. You know, what, you know, there's a lot of fear out there right now. What have you been doing personally to overcome all that fear that's out there right now? Uh, I just, I try to, to block that out. I just really dive in and mm-hmm. uh, think about it later. You know, uh, along over the course of 10 years and being in sales, you know, any sort of hesitation is going to, it's going to cause uh stack, you're really going to miss a beat. So just really putting yourself out there and, and taking the chance and go out and meeting people. And I think that's a big part of it. Um, in terms of fear of getting in the, the first deal, you really have to understand what your goals are and and why you want to do it. And if that's more important than being scared for a little while, um, you know, just you have to push yourself out of that comfort zone or else you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. I, I mean, as you know, one of the first things we do at my boot camps is goal setting on steroids because how the hell are you going to yeah. get anything if you don't know what it is? You got to know yeah. what it is and you got to know why you want it. So you have that burning desire to push through, push through fear. You know, listen, there's a lot of fear out there right now with the upcoming recession and we're definitely going to have a recession. And so, 
you know, I want to tell you, there is probably no greater opportunity than we are going to have in our lifetimes coming. And, you know, and then a lot of people are going to be afraid and hunker down and they're going to miss out like I did in 2008 and nine. If I hadn't been hiding under a rock because I just lost 50 million bucks, we'd be doing this from my back of my 300 foot yacht because I would have massively kicked ass. Well, I'm, I'm definitely not going to miss this one. And so, you know, if you're listening, you're thinking, OK, well, it's scary. You know, yeah, it, it, listen, but what you need to understand is with crisis comes opportunity and there will be exponential freaking opportunities coming on the horizon. So, mm-hmm. you know, on that note, if you haven't come to my Denver, if you don't have a ticket to my Denver boot camp, your butt needs to be there if you have any interest in this, because, um, you know, it, 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 there's going to be no greater opportunity than that to learn this business quick. And because if you're in the middle of it and you're trying to learn it, it's going to be too late. Uh, you know, you, you've got to start building those relationships, just like we just talked about with raising money. You've got to talk to investors and have them lined up. And, um, you know, and, and know how to underwrite deals and just, you know, get ahead of this, because like I said, there will be exponential opportunities. They're coming and we're already seeing the slowdown, a big slowdown. And we were in, you know, we, we, we were uh, about to pull the trigger on a deal for about 44 million and that price got dropped to 38 million. And we still back down because it didn't make sense. The numbers didn't make sense with the, with the debt, the way it is now, and that's going to continue to happen. So, you know, just be aware of that. But, um, uh, but anyway, so for it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Get excited, exactly. Get excited. So yeah. So where, where do you think? Go. I was going to say, where, where do you think you'd be, David, if you had just kept going then with the single family fix and flips instead of transitioning into multifamily? Yeah, I mean, fix and flip. It's a very transactional business. Obviously, you're always looking for the next deal and, and relying on being able to find a deal and, and turn it very quickly. Uh, and also obviously you have the tax implications. So, um, you know, I think that I would be kind of stuck in, stuck in the hamster wheel of constantly looking for that next deal and figuring out how we're going to fund and, and find our next opportunity. Um, not really building anything for the future. We were always just figuring out, you know, what's the next project going to look like and how we're going to get through it. Now we really have a vision for where we want to be five or 10 years down the line with our family and the sort of portfolio that we want to have built and what we're going to be able to do at that time. So multifamily is going to open up those doors for us that just going in and flipping houses and constantly looking for the next deal isn't going to provide. And in yeah. your opinion, if, if and when a recession does hit here, what, what do you think is going to happen to those single family fix and flippers? They're going to need to have their systems systems down for sure. And they're going to be, they're going to need to rely on some really good contractors and have really good relationships with their suppliers. Things are going to get, tight and um, finding maybe find maybe deal finding might be a little bit easier, but funding and, um, you know, working with contractors is going to get more difficult. And sure. selling those deals could become a little more yeah. challenging because, sure. you know, finding, yeah, you'll be able to find the deals, but uh, you know, if, if you're in that space and you're not going to do multifamily for God's sakes, you better be buying deals. You can, you can cash flow. And I'm going to yeah. tell you, you know, the, the same thing will be there in multifamily, you know, and, and if you're a wholesaler, you know, thinking you'll wholesale some deals, um, you know, I don't know if you saw the post we did, I don't know, probably six, eight months ago, where I asked people if they'd wholesale the deal and made over a hundred grand. I don't know if you saw that in the Warrior Facebook group, David, but I think so. Yeah. 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 Well, well, we had a dozen people say they'd made over a hundred grand wholesale in a multifamily deal. And, uh, so, you know, again, the, the numbers are bigger and, and, and frankly, it's safer. You know, the reason I had my butt handed to me in 2008, and nine was single, it was the single families that pulled me down. My multifamily did just fine. If I hadn't cross collateralized, uh, my multifamily apartment complexes with packages of houses to save 50 basis points or half a percent interest, I'd still have those apartment complexes. Yeah, they pulled back, but mm-hmm. but they would have survived. Um, so, you know, that's 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 one thing. But um, so, you know, what have you learned about this business in the last year, being a warrior and out there beating the bushes, you know, that that that, you know, that you're going to improve on even, you know, or or, or just in general, just answer it any way you like. Yeah, I think uh, one of the biggest things I've learned is is practicing patience. You, you know, a lot of people talk about how many deals they have to underwrite and look at before they find the the one that fits their criteria that that they can pull the trigger on. Um, you know, I've been in the in the program for just about a year, like you mentioned, and and finally closing my first deal as a general partner. Um, you're going to have to continue to practice a lot of patience. And obviously you, with a, a pending recession, there could be some more deals coming, but mm-hmm. you're not going to want to move on anything too quickly. And we want to be in a position to, to take advantage of any of those opportunities as they come up. So that, that's definitely one of the, the biggest things I've learned that deals are few and far between, but you know, as long as they work, then it's worth it. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and you've been, you know, you've collaborated with other warriors to review deals together to make sure you're not making a mistake. Yes. I mean, I don't know. If yeah, that's absolutely. The case. yeah. You're, yeah. you're doing your underwriting together. You have meetings, you go through them. That's such a critical piece of this. Yeah. You know, by the way, guys, if you are interested in applying to our warrior program, um, text the word crush to seven, two, three, four, five, and we'll set up a quick call. You will leave that call better than you joined it. I will promise you that whether it's a fit or not. Um, but, uh, again, text crush to seven, two, three, four, five, and we'll look you over and you can look us over and, and, uh, and that's how it works. So, um, yeah. And working with, you know, the, the warrior group and, and the mentor that I had over the past year, that was really helpful because I learned to refine the underwriting skills, learn to put some, some systems in place for my business. And, uh, it really helped me to prioritize what steps I needed to take as a, as a newbie into the industry and figure out, you know, how can I actually grow and build the team around me? What, what was my value going to be and what approach should I take? Yeah. Nice. No, that's great. I'm really pleased to hear that. So what, what would you recommend then to those listeners who are letting fear control all their decision-making right now? Yeah. And there's a lot of that right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have to consider if, if where you are today is is better or worse than where you want to be what in what your goals are and if you're willing to sacrifice your goals because of fear yeah. so if you're going to just sit in one place and not take any action are you going to be happy with where you are today five or ten years from now and if not then you need to actually get up and do something about it yeah no that's good that's that's absolutely right and and i mean you just have, you know disgust is a very powerful emotion you know i i i a lot of people haven't heard me tell this story but I remember, you know, pre 2008, nine, I actually had my ass handed to me back uh, when I was in my 20s. And I lived in what's probably about a two million dollar house in Denver at the time. I had a I had a Rolls Royce. I had my my Maserati. Everybody thought I was a freaking drug dealer. I know my neighbors did because I was always you know, I was working at home a lot. I was just doing real estate, but I lost it all. The market crashed a big crash. This is uh, I don't remember exactly when, but I remember that. I had my house foreclosed on and I remember, you know, actually painting a house to have enough money and my mom bringing me groceries. So I have enough money. So she was worried that I wouldn't have groceries. So I went from Rolls Royce to mom bringing me groceries and I had a little meltdown and I was like, fuck this and threw the paintbrush down and had a little epiphany, you know, and, and a pivotal moment that I was like, and then, you know, and then I bought 500 houses in that next run and some apartment complexes. But let me ask you, have you had any epiphany moments like that? Any defining moments where you're like, or even just an aha moment. I know I I didn't prepare you for any of this, but anything like that come to mind? Yeah. Yeah. And I do. It. It's, uh, it's not ex- exactly multifamily related, but mm-hmm. it's what led to our, our decision to get into multifamily for sure. And, um, we were managing two, two projects at once. And, and obviously we had our own, our own home during the, the freeze that came through Texas early last year. Oh yeah. That was um, a big one. Yeah. Fortunately, fortunately, we only had one pipe burst in all three homes, but um, we were dealing not only with that, but a number of other issues at the same time. And, and not really knowing how they were all going to turn out. But that was really the catalyst for us to decide that we needed to transition and, and to really focus on something um, something that's going to scale scale faster and really get us out of that, that transactional mindset and the hands-on business of, of flipping and moving into multifamily. You know, with flipping and wholesaling, you're only as good as the last deal. And, you know, yes, you can raise some quick cash and it's not a bad way to, to do that. You could certainly do it on the side, but you need to be buying for your own account. So, it's you know, at some point you don't have to work anymore. I mean, you've got those checks coming and you make it till the first, you know, but back to that freeze for a second. We had it hit Shreveport, Louisiana, where yeah. I had a, a nightmare asset, 403 units. That I'm sure you've heard me bitch about. We just sold it, by the way. Thank God, uh, you know, but we and we did well on it. But but the whole town froze and, and literally the whole town, the hospitals didn't have water. I mean, it was because the, the water lines were so low anyway. So I just digress, but, but that was quite a crazy, crazy time with, uh, you know, we, we, in fact, I had one of my maintenance guys that works on my compound here in Florida. He drove all the way to Shreveport with a, with a whole trailer full of water bottles to give to the residents there because, you know, there's just, you, you couldn't buy water. I mean, it was bad. It was ugly, mm-hmm. but uh, there's anyway. material shortage because of it as well. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, it's interesting that you guys are both saying, and I noticed this as well, 99% of people, they only really take action in their life when they feel pain, right? Everybody is just on the up right now. And so not a lot of people are 
Um, you know, you mentioned that, that fix and flip, obviously there's a lot of different things for you, Rod, which, you know, you've told many, many times, right. but, um, you know, whether it's your Denver, our Denver boot camp or the warrior program, you know, don't be that person who looks back and say, well, shit, I wish that I had gone to that, uh, Mm -hmm. when the recession does hit instead of being that person that's, oh, I don't know what to do when it does hit. Mm -hmm. But on that topic, David, you know, if you could go back, uh, what three years now, I guess, 2019, when you first started, what, what do you think you would do differently? If anything? If I knew what I know now after meeting everybody and going through the program, I definitely think I would look to scale faster. I would look to leverage my resources to scale immediately yeah. um, and, and taking the first opportunity to jump in headfirst into, into multifamily, whether that's starting with small multifamily and maybe a couple of duplexes and, or fourplexes and, and growing from there, or, or again, trying to get on a, a team and, and take down a hundred unit deal, but definitely something that's going to create longer term wealth generation and scale. Yeah. Yeah. L- l- let me ask you this. Uh, and by the way, back to the boot camp for a second, guys, if you're listening to this, I'm going to do something I don't normally do like this, but if you DM me on any social channel, I'll give you a code so you can come to that boot camp for $197 and it's three days of training. So it's kind of a no brainer and it's not a sales pitch. You know, I talk about the coaching for about 30 minutes, but then the rest of the time is full on drinking through a fire hose. So if you're interested, DM me on any social channel. I'll give you the code so you can come for 197. And, and you know, Denver is United Hub, so you can fly there nonstop from anywhere in the country. So don't miss out on this opportunity that's coming because it's going to be incredible. I know it is. It'll be scary, but you got to look past that and recognize the opportunity. If you can find assets that are cash flowing, there's no greater hedge against inflation and it'll It'll mm-hmm. just be extraordinary. Um, I was going to ask you, what's the driver for you, brother? What's what's what what motivates you? What's driving you know, or even the why? Tell me, tell me, yeah. tell me. I don't want to assume anything. It's definitely my my boys, my family. <clears throat> we, you know, I, I want to be able to to create time and and freedom to spend with them and and travel. You know, a passion of my wife and I is is travel um, mm-hmm. in the U.S. and internationally, and I want to be able to share that with our kids and make sure that I'm able to attend all their, their baseball games and football games or whatever it is. And, um, you know, show them different cultures and, and different philosophies as well, expose them to all that. So I want to be in a position within the next 10 years or so that we can, you know, we can travel whenever we want or go wherever we want with the kids. Love it. Absolutely. Love it. Well, listen, um, last question. Do you have any, any, any quotes or any, thing that that you enjoy anybody give you a quote a parent or a, or a mentor or anything that that you lean on from on occasion um not, nothing specific comes to mind right now but I, I just i always remember that you know with anything in life with with goals or whatever it's it's going to be with creating improvement it's it's going to be small incremental steps that are going to get you over huge challenges. So just thinking about what can I do every day to make one, one improvement or or make, get 1% better every day. And you're going to be that much closer to achieving your goals. You you take those little micro improvements out over time and they become massive shifts. And one of the gifts you probably got from me in the warrior program is a book called the slight edge, which is exactly about what we're talking about here. And Tony Robbins has something he calls can I constant never ending improvement where you just make small shifts. And that's what we try to do in my organization. And we're always trying to make it a little bit better. And and Mm -hmm. like the warrior program, adding all sorts of new things all the time to try to make it a little bit better and constantly improving. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, brothers, great to see you. Congratulations on the success. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure I'll see you in Denver and and uh, I appreciate you coming on and, and sharing a little wisdom, my friend. Yeah. Thank you very much yeah. for having me. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Rod, I know a lot of our listeners are wanting to take their multifamily investing business to the next level. Now, I know you've been hard at work helping our warrior students do just that using our ACT methodology, which is awareness, close, and transform. Can you explain to the listeners how they can get our help? You bet. Guys, we've been going nonstop for three years, building an amazing community of like-minded people. And our coaching students, which we call our warriors, have had extraordinary results. They've purchased thousands and thousands of units. And last year, we did over a thousand units with our students. And we're looking to grow this group and take it to the next level. 
We're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework that's really step by step and then leverage our systems and network to raise equity, to find and close deals, and to build partnerships nationwide. Now, our warrior community is finding success in any market cycle. So, if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more of our incredible network and take advantage of the incredible opportunities that are coming very soon, apply to work with us at mentorwithrod.com or text CRUSH to 72345 and we'll set up a call so you can check us out and we can check you out. Again, to apply, text CRUSH to 72345. 